I missed you guys. It's been too long. Far too long. But hey, I think we're all in better places now than the last time we talked, so it's fortuitous. Since the last time we talked, I'm the only one that's still in the same place. <laughs> so Chase bad. <laughs> Let's hear where you're at, Chase. Where are you since you say that you are the same? What's going on? I don't think I could stand more in the same exact place than I was last time. Now, granted, <laughs> yes. no man can step in the same river twice because the river is not the same, nor is the man. But if we're talking physical location, my feet can't be any closer to exactly where they were the last time we talked. Yeah. Here, I'll give you my address and you can check. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Wolfgang, you Which, moved. I moved, yeah, I'm back in Romania. And I would like to thank my beautiful, amazing osteopath. I had a visit to her yesterday and she helped me heal the last remnants of stress and hopelessness and all kinds of bullshit that I had left and trauma that I had left from from being in Sweden. So shout out to her. She's wonderful. And I feel amazing. So yeah. Romania, Romania feels better than Sweden. Oh, of course. Sure, Bucharest is a polluted piece of shit, but the food's good, and so are the people. I've heard good things about Romania. Wolfgang, you said you went to an osteopath yesterday. Is that like a therapist? I mean, on paper, that's a bone therapist, right? But she's more of a healer. She knows how to do pretty much fucking anything. Uh, yesterday, she didn't really need to align any of my bones. They were pretty much fine. Um, but we sat down and she did. I don't remember what she called it. Cr- cranial something where she Yes, sat cranial to... sacral. I think so. I don't know. Yes. I don't yes. remember what it's called. Uh, but yes. she sat next to me and put her hand on my chest and her other hand... Uh, behind my like nape i guess um and uh we went on a journey speaking of mushrooms no no psychedelics included just just the brain dude Dude. and the heart and and everything (laughs) well like okay so so you said that you went to an osteopath and it like helped you heal your trauma and i was just like fourth or fifth time i go to it like it's good my idea of what an osteopath is has didn't have a lot to do with healing trauma. Like I was thinking about osteo and bones. Yeah, but, it's uh, literally like bones and nervous system on like paper, right? That's the definition. But your osteopath is also like therapy, or does it just like, or is it just like fixing your body helps you fix your mind? She does. She's uh, she says it. She's just journeying with you. It's just teamwork. <laughs> that is a psychedelic job. Yeah, it is. I mean, I think she does kineto and like all kinds of stuff. It's not just osteopathy. Like she has a whole ass thing going on with like helping everybody of every kind. She is a true healer and I appreciate her because Lord knows I have not met many people like her and I look forward to meeting more. Mm, And you're in that integration phase right now. Okay. The only reason I say that is because since the last time we talked, I've been going to so many different modalities of therapy, whether, uh, but I went, so I've been going to this craniosacral therapist, man, like within the first five minutes, I'm fucking bawling 10 more minutes. I'm laughing five more minutes. I'm bawling. Like it is legit. And the craziest part about it is you start to see the world after you let go of all this trauma that you've been holding on to for decades. And then you're like, wait a second, this is what I used to feel like when I was a kid. And Mm -hmm. so the integration process is actually one of the scariest for me because you start to see the world through such a vivid lens of what you used to when you were a child. And that in itself takes me like four to five weeks of integration each time I see her because uh, I asked her, I'm like, hey, how much should I be doing this with you? She's like, it takes like five, five weeks of integration until the next session, which, you know, it's a legit healer if she can only work with you once every month and a half. <laughs> so what does integration mean when you say that? Because I have not So that me- meaning like when you release that trauma. Mm -hmm. how you go about your because like me personally when I have when I've gone to this lady my 
relationships change immediately. My interactions change with people immediately. I'm like, holy shit, my whole life is different. Like, this is crazy and this is scary and it's happening all at once. And it's new, I think, because it's new is the scariest part. And that part of learning how to live again and being okay with like accepting the love and abundance of the relationships that are happening, I'm, and then you start to level up. You start to learn about like, okay, now I can start to do this. I can start work toward like you, ha you have such an expanded mind because you're no longer hanging on to that trauma that was keeping you down. And so, dude, it's fucking crazy. Like craniosacrotherapy, I recommend it to everyone. It is so wild. Can I ask you three questions? Yes. Okay, you can answer them all at once. So, so one is, did you know it worked after the first session? Two is, how long are the sessions? And three is, typically, what does a, a therapy session look like? Because I'm, I just, my understanding of therapy is very verbal and talky. Um, and it, this sounds like a totally different thing. From going to her, I've started the talking therapy uh, where that, so that's gone a lot better, but a session with her. The reason why I went there is because I have a trainer friend and she's a girl and we were working together just on learning more about the body. And we were like, Hey, my client's dealing with this over a month. I started noticing this drastic change within her. I was like, what is going on? Like you have changed. You're more at peace. Like you're more childish you're embracing your and she's like oh i've been going to this lady she's awesome so i uh emailed her and set up a thing so a standard session lasts about an hour an hour to an hour and a half um we talk for like five or ten minutes at the start just to see how things are going and the first session that i had had with her i laid down on this uh what would be like a massage table basically and she started out at my feet and she held uh, her hands at my feet and she's like, okay, you have a block in this area. So she did exactly what Wolfgang said, where she takes the hands and goes to the area of which needs to be uh, performed and literally just sits there. And then these questions, like these mm -hmm. visions start to come forth and uh, you don't even know what's happening because uh, it's just all happening at once. So um, basically you either start crying, you start laughing. There's just stuff that you feel that you didn't know was there. That's releasing. It's releasing yeah. and it's coming through, through you. And, uh, yeah, it, I felt it immediately. And like I said, the interactions, as soon as I walk out of there, every time they're so raw, they're so vivid. I, I see, um, I see a world that I have not seen in so long since I was a child. I'm guessing I see the world that Chase Barron sees every day. <laughs> but it feels as though, yes, you feel it immediately. To answer your question, Chase, uh, you feel it immediately. Um, you The sessions last anywhere from an hour, an hour, an hour to an hour and a half. And I'm laying on the massage table as she's basically working the energy around my body. Just hovering her hands above my body. Wolfgang, is that what your osteopath kind of looks like? Uh, yesterday was a bit like that, although she didn't really hover that much. It was more of a, like a tactile placing the hand on the chest gently on the, in the heart region. And like I said, the back of the, the neck, um, and just kind of holding me and just, yeah, guiding me meditatively, like visions, all that kind of stuff. But pretty much every session with her has been a different thing. The first time, the very first time I went to her years ago, she aligned the shit out of my bones and nervous system because that was the first time I ever did anything like that in my life uh, after decades of, you know, using chairs and doing all kinds of nonsense. Um, and back then, winter still existed in Romania. So when I went to her, it was thick motherfucking ice right outside on the streets. People were slipping everywhere. So I like by the time, like when I was walking there, I was like big footing, just trying not to slip. <laughs> I go in there for an hour. She zips up, bub -doop, does her thing. I am walking out of that place 
with such good posture and confidence that I am just normally walking on the ice like it's not even there and I'm not slipping. There's like the ice does not exist basically for me. And I just I'm just strutting on the street like it's a fucking movie with people around me fucking slipping and sliding. And I'm just like, yeah, yeah, I'm walking, baby. Let's go. <laughs> like just that opened my mind enormously when that I'm like, yeah, okay, everything's fucking possible. Let's go. <laughs> yes. Man, I think uh because I'm so in my head, like, I don't know how much just talking through things is helpful for me. I feel like I need to find somebody. It seems like this is a very body integrated. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of visualizing as well. You're not just thinking about things like I, I would describe to her specifically, like, I feel pressure in this part of my, my brain or like, you know, th these areas and should be like, okay, let's focus on this uh, emotion. Uh, can you give it a color? Right. And then I was like, yeah, my brain, I visualize it as being like bruised violet. And after we were done, I visualize it as pink. So like there's everything is involved in it. But you're right, Chase, it is mainly body like there. My first session with her, I was completely disconnected from my lower half of like my legs and down like. And then when she released this trauma was in my hip. Dude, I felt the blood flowing into my legs again. I felt the blood in my feet. I would, and then like the second session, blood was flowing into my hands. And it's like this new feeling of blood going into areas of your body that has never gone before. And it's fucking crazy. It's so, it's such a body experience. Like you have to release all thinking. You're literally just feeling. Yeah. So thank you for reminding me. Go ahead, Chase. I don't know. You're, I'm just, I have so many questions. Um, you are a personal trainer so you i like you obviously connect with your body a lot and like a huge part of your life is like like you're a guy that lives in your body and you're saying yes. like you feel blood flowing to your legs different than you would if you were like squatting and like you know exercising yes. your legs i i had no idea that i was just like i i i was squatting i i would get the butt pump i love the butt pump but it was uh, it was to a point where I did not realize how disconnected I was from my feet, from my ankles, from my calves. And the crazy thing is when you release that trauma, then you want to start like moving in that area. So like now I've been strengthening my ankles a lot, my feet a lot. I didn't realize how much was keeping me back from feeling those things. So the areas of which you release then you're able to start to train them. And my training has gone even deeper now because I'm feeling things in my hips, in my ankles, in my feet. It's completely taken me to another level. So have you had like a deep tissue massage ever? I have. And this is just on a whole different level. This is a whole different level. Um, I've I've had a deep tissue massage from a healer. Like this dude moves energy through your body and it's legit. Like this guy is legit who I go to as well. This craniosacral shit is next fucking level, man. Like I, and you have to find a good one. I'm sure there's a lot of bad ones, but. Oh, for sure. Like this good one. Yeah, for sure. I highly recommend it. Just say the, say the name of this therapy again. It's cranial sacral or craniosacral. Yeah, it's craniosacral or craniosacral. I'm, I know I'm not pronouncing it correctly, but it's cranio, C-R-A-N-I-O. I, I believe it's a dash and then it's sac sacral, sacral, S-A-C-R-A-L. Interesting. All right, I'm going to, I will actively look into this. This sounds amazing. Chase, while yeah. your brain is loading information in, integrating it, <laughs> uh, I want to go back to that story that uh, Mitch reminded me of. In that same first session, I told her how a dog, when I was like three, bit me in the back of my head, almost killing me. I don't know if I've ever said this story on the podcast, but definitely for another time. And she did this thing where she sat at my, like, on a chair at my head, like, because I was laying on the bed thing. And just held my my head with her palms and just just followed where my head wanted to go, right? As she describes it. And after that, I felt so much blood flow in the next month, uh, like here in, in this area of my of my brain. And 
to the point where like I was remembering obscure memories from childhood when I was like four or five that I was like oh wow that happened like I genuinely completely forgot about it and just felt like like Mitch said just blood flow in my brain and that area of the brain felt like wasn't hasn't been there in fucking decades and she just released the river release the river baby so so would you say um and and this makes total sense is that like as we get older we get really you know you get good at things and you go down different paths and that that leads you far but like you get in these feedback loops to just keep sending you further and further away from your body typical therapy even like cognitive behavioral therapy is a lot about like identifying problems and coming up with uh alternative solutions playing out potential futures like wrestling with your past but it's to me a lot of this feels and seems like verbal and thought based and maybe what you guys are describing with these alternative therapies like there are just certain things that are stuck in your body that like your mind won't let you access but you need to find some sort of alternative way to connect with your body in a way that maybe unlocks a bit of your past and like pulls the pulls the all those like you've got you're wearing like 50 pairs of glasses that are kind of distorting reality and it just starts to fucking pull those things off that's so interesting yeah, yes well, you're spot on yeah we've talked have about you this. uh have you heard of the oh yeah after you Wolfgang. we've talked about stuff like this in the past as well in previous episodes how we have you know the, the brain the heart the gut yeah and like everything and then t- tapped into consciousness and all that stuff and all of it is really just one and this kind of practice helps reunify everything disconnected was how i felt yesterday as well and she helped me refill myself with myself in a way to put it that way to refill that authenticity within myself and reconnect with me and the universe and everything but like those as we know the trauma is stored in the body right so the physical aspect of it is absolutely I guess it's in, imperative, important, however you want to look at it, because yeah, blood flow, blockages, all that stuff, trauma will make you stiff in a certain places. My my gut was rock hard, and she just she just like massaged it gently for like 15, 20 minutes until it like released trauma. Mm. And I was like, I was telling her like the story of like Sweden, what happened? Like I was like, yeah, for the second year, we basically starved in sweden me and my friend and she's like oh yeah no like of course your stomach is the way it is and i was like i was telling her since i came back to romania i seem to have this hunger in waves what i i was like well i did until yesterday really (laughs) yeah that's this hard chapter change let's be real i had this thing where like i would be really 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 fucking hungry for a few days and i would eat everything like protein everything just everything and then for like a few days i'd be fine and then be like this is a cyclical thing. And she's like, yeah, well, if you start for a year, it makes sense that your body is just like trying to figure out that stuff. She said it much more uh, gracefully than I did. But <laughs> so, yeah, my point is everything connects, you know, releasing blood flow in a part of your body allows you to think about those things that are stored there. And it's not just sacred stuff, although I would say definitely part of it. I think it's everything working together to be the, your your oneness and then the oneness of everything thermodynamics baby (laughs) yeah you don't just have blocks in your head you have blocks in your body you know and mm, wow now i have like i have like legitimate homework to do (laughs) nice yeah this is a whole whole new world you're gonna come back and be like yo the alchemist is not fiction (laughs) (laughs) yeah the alchemist might be a true story (laughs) might might hey while we're talking about therapy um, yes i have a friend who close friend who had like an amazing life-changing experience Mm -hmm. doing a form of therapy where and um mitch yeah i mean you're listening to mind pump i know mind pump sal recently did this too just i don't know if you all i don't know if you've been listening but it's a form of therapy where i forget what it's Uh, called emdr yeah emdr yeah I i have a friend that uh, did EMDR and and like from every from the two accounts that I have it sounds like they both unlocked this kind of cyclical habit loop uh 
traumatic block that kind of informed their whole life. And they, they through doing EMDR, realized how like kind of a, a certain thing plays out in their life and it kind of unwinds it and you just see it everywhere. And I don't even know how to describe it, but that's what the two people Awareness. I've heard describe it say. Insight. So, so EMDR stands for eye movement reintegration something. So they literally take, there's different forms that you can do in uh, EMDR, but they take like a light and you have to follow the light with your eyes back and forth at a certain pace, like back and forth. And then all of a sudden, since your eyes are moving back and forth and the, and the person who invented EMDR uh, invented it after going on a hike in nature because they were moving their eyes around. Probably on nature, drugs. Probably on drugs. Uh, they were moving their eyes around how your eyes should move in nature. And then things just start coming up in, in our daily lives. Our eyes don't move like that anymore. We have our phones, we have our televisions, we have our screens. So we're not constantly scanning for things. And so yeah, dude, I did EMDR yesterday uh, with my therapist, my other therapist, and I found out, oh my gosh, it, I went fucking deep. Like, it was, it was fucking crazy. I, yeah, so much, uh, yeah, EMDR, I highly, I highly recommend that as well. I just love that there are so many ways to achieve similar things, and our body just responds to all of these things in a beautiful way. There's so many ways to go uh, after trauma. Everyone has trauma. I'm realizing this yep. from going from doing all this. The reason why you're not enjoying life, if you're not enjoying life right now, is because you have fucking trauma stored inside of you. Whether you know it or not, you've been ignoring it for so long. And we have we have distractions every day for us not to feel that trauma, for us not to uh, face that trauma. We have our phones, we have food, we have alcohol, we have cigarettes, we have nicotine, we have uh, Instagram, we have social media. These things want to leave our body, but we just constantly keep ourselves distracted from feeling that trauma. At, like I, We all have trauma. We all experience trauma. It's are we able to allow ourselves to feel this trauma? And the cool thing with all these different modalities is they allow us to feel that trauma again and it's fucking scary and it's fucking, mm -hmm. but it's so worth it. It's so worth it to let that trauma go, let that shit go. And you'll have, a, I think to add to what Mitch is saying, uh, a lot of the, that type of trauma comes from upbringing usually. And then we just never deal with it because we don't know how. Um, and solving that is phenomenal and you let go of it and it genuinely leaves your body and you never think about it again or if you do it'll be in a very different lens in a very different perspective of peace and joy uh that's not to say traumatic events don't still happen through life of course they do uh but once you know how to deal with it how to let go who to go to like i was you know ever since i was in sweden i was like the like one of the first things i'm doing when i'm getting back home is i'm visiting my osteopath because i know that's going to be a shorter way to to heal myself um and then I just did everything I knew what to do until I had the appointment with it. So once you have those tools available, it's no longer out of reach. So I guess try to search for any of these things nearby and hopefully you find something good. Uh, but if anybody's listening and is like, what the fuck is trauma? I recommend either reading or listening to podcasts Gabor Mate has been in. I always fucking talk about him. That man is traumaturgist <laughs> that man is a magician of, of trauma and he understands it amazingly he's a doctor he knows his shit and he's talks about it in a very humane way uh that i think leads to healing and understanding that's my that's my shout out there to gabor mate dr gabor mate and I think it's uh, important to point out, Wolfgang, there's the big traumas, right? Your childhood trauma is big trauma. And then the little traumas are the things someone cuts you off in traffic. Like yeah. little traumas are going to happen every fucking day. Um, the big traumas are like the big traumas just feel so fucking good to release. And I know that I haven't released all of my big traumas yet, but I know I've released a few of them that I've been carrying on to for my whole fucking life. And it feels so good. Yeah. I visualize like you've got these uh, giant rocks inside of you and like you don't even know they're there 
Like That's it's kind of like the rock in the shoe and it's like, oh my God, I've, how have I been walking with this yes. rock in the I shoe? I used to it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, shout out to trauma being, I mean, this is just a truism for life is that the thing you need the most is where you least want to look. Yep. And that's like, that's just where we get fixated on other things. Like you said, Mitchie, like the phones and everything. And, but also just like healthy things, like even like just staying busy, you know, like uh, you can do a ton of productive shit and just not address your trauma. And you can be like reading books and not, yes, you know, you can be working out, you can be doing your job and going above and beyond and being a high achiever and just finding ways to not address your trauma. Yes, for sure. I have a question for you, Mitch. Uh, many episodes ago, you both talked about your, let's say, quote unquote addiction, or maybe without mm -hmm. a quote unquote, to consuming improvement content, to just like reading a ton of books, watching all the videos, just inhaling all of that. Do yes. you feel that need as much or at all since you've been doing this kind of therapy work that is such a good question and no i realize that i have all the answers through my own experience of which i need to interpret my experiences personally of course i love advice if i if i need advice i'll look for advice but i haven't had to do that the closest kind of advice that i've looked for is pulling tarot cards uh tarot cards I'll sit down like once a month when I feel like I need an answer or maybe just some guidance of what I should be doing tarot is fantastic but books podcasts I do not consume much uh much information outside of me now which is wild I can't believe you asked that question Chase how do you feel about that I am not there yet I just have and like, there's two, like, there's so many ways to look at it. There's infinite ways. There's not just two. But um, for me, like, I just really want to, and I, this might be a problem, but I still feel, um, maybe I feel like I need to add to myself, like I'm not enough. Maybe that's what it's coming from. But I just constantly um, want to be learning and getting better. You know, like I'm in a master's program and that requires reading a ton of shit every week. But then on top of that, I'm also just learning about like something piques my interest. And I'm like, how much can I learn about this? Um, there's probably something. Yeah, there. there's no, probably something you're totally there. right. Sorry, Wolfgang, I'm, I'm reading a little bit. So like my most recent interest uh, in the past couple months has been sex, like just my relationship with sex, uh, sex in general. I feel like sex is not talked about as much as it should be because it's such an integral part of people's relationships and it's such an integral part of people's lives that I realized I knew nothing about sex. So I have been reading an awesome book called Smart Sex by Dr. Emily Morris. She has her podcast. Yeah, uh, yeah, sex with yeah, Emily. yeah, 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 Sex with Emily. And she was just on, um, on, Mind, on Mind Pump as well. I was following her before that, but I was super pumped to see her on Mind Pump. The book is awesome. But I still consume that information, like I take that information and then I go to apply it in my own life, in my own life experience. I'm learning more from my life's experiences now than I was a year ago or six months ago where I was just trying to consume as much content as I could. Yeah, it's you're not filling up a void. It's you're in, like integrating everything that you're you're. Uh experiencing in that sense You're yes learning. integration exactly and i know chase has a great co quote for the integration as well oh the knowledge without action is just a party trick that's the one <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 no dude that's it that's a great point about uh consuming information it's like it is it because if you if it's not going to use it pretty much is filling a void um yeah, Ufgang, I know that you don't struggle with that. Actually, wait, wait, before, uh, we're going to hang on to this. I need to ask you a question um, because you were talking about trauma and telling people where to look and stuff. And before I forget, where do people look to find alternative means of therapy? Like, did you guys find about these alternative therapists from friends or like, were you like looking online? Like, how did you find a good person? Because I feel like there are a lot of, uh, you know, like you said, there's a lot of bad therapists out there. 
Yeah, I would say my personal journey into self-development has been ongoing for a decade. And I say ongoing, but I don't know if I've been so much, you know, into it as much as as much as uh, I was just existing. You know, I'm just existing and that itself is the journey. Um, so I don't feel as attached to that identity anymore. But um, I think that helped made me make me open-minded enough that when I heard through word of mouth about my osteopath, I would be like, oh yeah, 100%, going right now. No, no doubt about it. No skepticism. I This is going to help. This is everything I've been studying and this person knows how to apply shit that I don't know because I haven't studied that kind of like doctor level stuff, right? What I did was fucking some dude making moonshine in a forest type of mm. like mm. knowledge, right? Just for myself and my own uh, apl- applications and let's be real entertainment sometimes. But absolutely only through word of mouth. Uh, I did not have the luxury and uh I don't want to say opportunity because that feels like a blah word these days to me. Mm-hmm. Um, I do not have the luxury of fucking having a podcast like this that is just like, hey, these terms, these things, you can go fucking go look it up. Like Chase said, I have homework to do. And I was like, yeah, you can go look at that. And then from there, you can be like, okay, what are some, okay, Google, where are some osteopaths in my area? You're welcome. Whoever has mm-hmm. Google enabled. <laughs> <laughs> and I, that's how I would do it today with the knowledge I have. But Man, if it doesn't fucking feel ethereal before you have that knowledge. I'm still there with financial stuff. I don't know how to fucking make money to save my life. I have no idea. And every time <laughs> I learn from anybody, they're like, you got to pay up to learn. And I'm like, this is the problem right here. I don't have the money to give you <laughs> the fucking money thing. <laughs> uh, so like, yeah, I, I it's... That's like whatever money is fucking imaginary, right? But trauma isn't. So being in this like space where you're like, you don't really know where to even look for something that's personal like that, that is, you know, your well-being is uh, probably a very disconnected place to be. So yeah, that's my answer. Mm. Was, really. I yeah. was, find someone, perfect moment, who knows? Find someone who you truly enjoy being around or find someone, this is my personal experience. If you see someone who looks fucking happy, like truly, and I'm not saying like they're jumping around, they look excited. I'm saying if you find someone who truly looks happy, ask them what they're doing. Ask them what they're doing. And then if they send you to someone, then you can ask that person. So what I did is I asked the person who I was like, hey, something's changed within you. Who are you seeing? She's like, I'm seeing this lady. So then when I went to that lady, I was like, hey, do you have any recommendations for therapists in town, like cognitive behavioral therapists? She's like, yeah. She, and she wrote down a list of them. I texted five of them, one texted back and was like, yeah, I got availability. So now I'm seeing him as well. I would have to say word of mouth as well, but I'm not saying to discredit your gut. Like, I think your gut knows at the end of the day, if you should type into Google, hey, yeah. this is what I'm looking for. If something feels right, Go with it, but just stick with your gut. If something doesn't feel right, then it's not right. Like, don't try and force something. Stick with it. That's my advice. Yeah, exactly. Where what you're saying is, it's the the, if you flip it around, is you will sometimes want to ask these questions out of nowhere to people because of your gut. So fucking listen to that. Don't ignore it. Even if it sounds silly, ask the person. I, so much of my life has been improved by asking simple questions that were like a gut feeling to like just the most random fucking shit that just like leads into a whole new perspective of life or area of knowledge or whatever simply from being like hey what about the this there's just boom conversation <laughs> yeah but yeah, those uh, thoughts, in the mario like, voice <laughs> hey what those about thoughts? this <laughs> exactly mamma mia but Doing a better job than Chris Pratt right here. You go me. to your therapist and you're just like, hey, what about it is? I want to the mat. <laughs> My parents um, never love me. <laughs> What's up with that? I don't. <laughs> well, maybe a little bit more. Um, but <laughs> those gut questions were, um, I don't know, preceded by, that's a stupid question. I don't know, why, am I, why would I ask that? 
Mm. It's like, no, fuck that. Do it. Listen to your gut, both in telling you to go for it and in telling you get the fuck out. Chase, have you gone? Uh, have you experienced much therapy in your lifetime? Not a lot, man. I have not gone down the therapy pass path a whole lot. I have only like talked to people who are therapists, but not even in a therapy setting. I only know them. You yeah. also, and I don't know you. I like I don't mean to put this on you because we've all been through our own shit. You also had a pretty fucking great childhood. <sighs> I did. Helps. I did, man. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel bad about that. That's fantastic. Rejoice every time you see someone actually having a good childhood because it's so fucking rare these days. Yeah, man. I've had it smooth and I've had the cards dealt to me in a way that like I was actually just on my back porch thinking about this very thing of like I got into I don't want to say self-help, but I got into the study of myself and figuring out what other people do to feel okay when I was still developing my brain. Like I was looking into the shit when I was in like, you know, like middle school is like when I started. Mm. Like I remember there was a day when I like hung out after class at like seventh grade English class. And I was talking to my professor about like just some existential ideas. And he's like, dude, you seem like you're going through this self-realization thing that I went through in like, you know, after I graduated college. And I was like, yeah, man, I don't know. I just like, I got on the path early, but I'm still like, I don't know. I'm still operating. I know I'm stuck in a certain way. I know that I'm in, even if it's feeling good, I'm, there's a way that I am in that I could be out of. Interesting. Yeah, in what way? If it does feel good, you have more freedom in the end. If you manage to like be aware of it. Anyway, continue. Oh no, I don't. I don't even know in what way. That's the problem. Like, I love that. It's the rock and the shoe. You know, I've probably got plenty of. Yes. That. Yes, we yeah. all do. The thing, and it's really <laughs> like I'm fucking obsessive. Like when I find something, when I find trauma, I'm like, I want to heal all this trauma right now. So <laughs> I go down. I invest all of this money into these therapies like just do it on your own fucking time in your own fucking way there's no rush like just enjoy well, that's your pace you. right and that's valid dude my your pace my, is, it my needs pace to go is, now <laughs> yes my pace is pedal to the fucking metal let's cry and feel as shitty as we can uh for as Shit. short of time as we can or however long it's meant to be yeah and so um, so like when people talk about therapists and like, if like I say a friend of mine went to a, a, a special type of therapy and like had good results, um, part of me is like, yeah, like I noticed that you were sad before and like that therapist helped you a lot and that's awesome. But then I'm like, 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 I'm like, oh, I'm not that I'm not struggling with that much. So maybe like, I don't need to, but I mean, everybody mm -hmm. needs to, you know what I mean? Maybe, or maybe you're just not vibing with that. Yeah, maybe. It could just be your gut. It could just be your gut being like, hey, yeah, I recognize it helped them. It might not help me, though. It doesn't feel right. Like, you'll know when it feels right. It feels like, and I've been thinking this before this conversation, but it feels like I need to do some more investigative work that isn't just between me and a book, but is between me and like an, an expert who's going to unlock some shit. And it might need to be more yeah. body integrated. I mean, you nice. might body integrated stuff, so. Why not? I love it. I love therapy. It's good. It's good, huh? Good shout out. Shout out to therapy. How long have you been, both of you, uh, how long have you been doing different forms of therapy? A couple probably, months now. Probably, like I said, for a decade. Been trying Wolfgang, to a decade. Mitchie, a couple months. That yeah. that uh, individuation journey is definitely a form of therapy, but I haven't like been to a therapist right for ten years. Like I'm talking about my my own personal journey, has been therapeutic because with how I grew up and how shitty it was, these ten years have been fucking well, night and day difference, 
right? So in that way, it has been therapeutic. And then the therapists that I've been to have been the osteopath and like, that's about it, I guess. Just people who will listen, good people. Having good people in my life has been one of the most therapeutic things. Having you guys in my life has been fucking therapeutic. And it's what, the third year, I think, we're doing this? Or the second year? <laughs> oh, that's so, nice of you to say, okay. It's the truth. I learned sure. so much about my body integration and just felt better overall after all of these. So. Yeah, I would say a decade overall, everything encompassing and just tons and tons of directions and tons of shit everywhere. And that's the one point I was probably running in circles <laughs> for a while. I still might be. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> but, but it feels a little bit better. Yeah. Do you think you're ever done with it? Yeah. Never. Like I said, I, I think you can release the trauma you have and you can gain new trauma throughout life. But you can still release that. You're not. You are not your trauma. Your trauma is just a tool, I think, for survival. Because as Gabor Mate says, trauma is an event that happens that you don't have any understanding of in the moment. Like getting lost in the food aisle as a like two year old and not seeing your parents around you. That's probably very traumatic because you're like, I don't understand what's happening. What I'm alone. What What is this feeling? You know. A friend of mine saw a commercial for some movie or something on TV when she was one years old and was terrified of those things from the commercial, like those concepts and shapes and things throughout life. And then through therapy, she found out, oh, that's what that was and was able to let go of it. So trauma can can come in many forms. It's It comes from definitely from lack of awareness. And I don't think there's any way of avoiding it because people die, grief happens. But grief is a tool that heals trauma. So it goes back to those tools, I think. It's like, yeah, you can be free of it. And if it happens again, you can be free of it again. Have you guys ever tried Kundalini Yoga? Kundalini Yoga? I've tried a couple of them through Russell Brand's YouTube channel. A couple of those. So so I've been doing this uh, Kundalini for probably the past month straight since I've been doing the healing with that craniosacral therapist. I was like, how can I like not have to come to you so often? Like, how can I in like integrate on myself? Like, and so every morning for 30 minutes, I've been going through the spinal series of Kundalini yoga and you just start out at your root chakra move, and you're moving in a certain way, you're breathing in a certain way. And I can feel me activating and letting go of uh, anything that has been stuck. And it ha I have to do it every fucking morning. Like, I take on trauma, I take on energy every fucking day, even though I would consider myself to be an aware person at this point, um, every morning. And it has helped so much. Like the darkness that I experience every morning in the Kundalini Yoga, I can then go and have uh, fabulous interactions with other humans throughout my day. Highly recommend. I can uh, send you guys the link to the YouTube video as well it takes like 30 minutes it's so fucking nice so nice it's very subtle it's very subtle but the more you do it the more not so subtle it becomes please put it in the footnotes yeah i will do that i will do that tomorrow nice awesome i'll send it to you guys yeah i'm also probably gonna start i'm I'm actually definitely just gonna look in and just investigate like i'm gonna even talk to my friend about like who his emdr therapist was I feel oh, like I would love that. You guys talking about this just makes me feel like there is so many rocks in my shoes that I just am failing to feel. I'm hoping that's not the feeling most people get. I, I don't want people to get out of this episode being like, I'm so fucked up. <laughs> no, it's, it's not that. It's more well, like for me, um, because as Mitchie said, like, I don't feel like I'm carrying around a lot of weight. And that's just true. But like how much brighter could it be like am i wearing like three pairs of sunglasses and i just always have been and i've just been like fuck it life mm. is awesome you know and like maybe um you, you know i also just have a historic amazing ability to be and it's not amazing it's like a 90 percent of the time awesome ability to only be optimistic and like i can like it is I, amazing I, Dude, I can be walking through fire and just, we've said this so many times, man. And I'm just, I'm like, 
maybe I have this giant like pile of traumatic experiences that are just sitting in some vessel somewhere in me and I just or maybe you just don't it's also possible you just don't have trauma it's entirely possible but like I said I think exploring these things because you want to sounds like you want to I do want to it just gives you more awareness of yourself to begin with so you know where you're at even if that place is the worst that could happen yeah Yeah, the worst that could happen is you learn something unless you go to explore (laughs) <laughs> as yeah. you explore and you realize hey i'm i i don't have any trauma i'm a fucking boss dude it's it's the reason that you go for a uh it's the reason you go for like an annual physical with your doctor like it's like nothing's wrong yeah. with me but like let me make sure yeah pretty much like, that yeah like let me get blood work done just because yeah yes for sure i think that sounds awesome i would love to hear you chase you sound like the kind of guy that sure. walks through fire and goes barbecue time dude <laughs> I, w- I want to ask you something. How much of that, and I don't want, like shitty contemporary terms aside, just like between our understanding of, of stuff like this, how much of this optimism do you feel falls into a like sort of, God, I hate saying this, toxic positivity type of like thing? And I mean, let me elaborate what I say by that because I really don't want to sound like a fucking BuzzFeed article in the sense of like, it's so optimistic that it becomes detrimental to you and people around you, right? That it's like you put the horse blinders on of optimism and you just don't see any other truth out there or anything else. So like, I I consider your optimism to be pretty healthy overall. So I don't know. I I can't say I've noticed uh, that kind of behavior in you. So I'm asking you if you have noticed something like that or if you think like part of your optimism goes into that kind of like blind optimism side of things yeah thank you um that's a great question um i feel like my outlook and my actions um maybe i think in the past it could have been that kind of toxic positivity where you don't even realize the dark side but as i have grown i think i've gotten really i've gotten a hell of a lot better at acknowledging darkness like i'm actually so aware of darkness now it's it's um like i for for how much I smile, I investigate a lot of dark shit constantly. And like, you know, like I hunt because I'm like, if I'm going to eat meat, like I need to kill animals. You know, I'm just like, you can't just have, you can't just have the feast without having the death. Like life mm-hmm. is just so dark. And um, yeah, I think maybe in the past I would have struggled with that. But like lately... I can get serious if I need to. Like there is, there are times when, and like if I get serious, people know that it's <laughs> serious um, because of how rare it is. Uh, but there's a lot that I just don't take that. It's Same. not that I don't take it seriously. I just, I truly believe that a lot of the things that people get worked up about are insignificant. And you'd be correct. Dude, the, the thing that people get worked up, the things that people get worked up about is not what they're getting worked up about. It's because they mm. have fucking trauma. It's exactly. because the trauma is there. Mm. What if it's cynical, I feel it personally. There are things that happen in my daily life now where I can be like, uh, I did not um, treat that interaction as if I would have six months ago. Like it's not even sticking to me anymore. Things do not even stick to me anymore. If something happens in my day, Things don't stick to me anymore because the trauma is gone. It feels so good. I, I breathe it out. I send the energy back out. And it's like, boom, let's move on. Dude, I would have Dude. clinged onto such menial, fucking insignificant bullshit two days ago. And now I'm just like, yeah, whatever. And I just trust yes. myself to just do, go do thing. Yes. And you see that trauma manifesting physically in people. You see... Uh, this the, the, that they have these blockages in their body, which manifest as layers and layers of fat, where there's no energy moving, where they just think to shove, shove, shove things down there, so they don't have to feel it, and it keeps oh, no, that one more physically. <laughs> like I feel it, I felt it, I see it in people, and I'm not saying that I'm judging them. I know how that feels, and it feels fucking shitty. It feels shitty to just be constantly shoving stuff down. Uh, but you can see it manifesting physically. And as soon as that trauma leaves, then everything else leaves. It's so fucking nice. Dude, I enjoy food so much more now. 
like wow. uh, <laughs> it's like food has taste um but like just the some of the blockages like when you say blockages it's really feels like a blockage i don't know if you can identify something like this in in your life chase we'll see uh it's partly why i'm saying it i'm curious about that like i would have blockages about like i'm i want to go like i feel that i want to go uh, or i would feel that i want to go for a walk in the park mind you a park is like right next to me it's fucking there's no effort to go there but i would feel like physically held back from putting my shoes there would just be this endless pressure against me to to just go for a fucking walk in the park it's like, why do that? Just go eat some more food or some shit. Just be lazy. Just play a video game. I mean, I still play video games because I have to. It's my job. But I should enjoy that a lot more now, too. So, yeah, when, I, when Mitch says blockages, that really resonates as, like, a physical, mental, emotional, like, barrier sometimes. Yes. Feel that way. Yes. Like I'm just saying, like, yeah, like, putting my shoes rocks. on and I'm not even thinking about it. I'm just fucking going. Yes, and it's not a form of out of oh, I have to do this. I have to go on a walk. Because Enjoyment turn into a fat piece of shit. It's like I want to go on a walk because it feels fucking good, even though I might be a little bit tired and sitting on the couch feels a little bit more comfortable. I want to go on a walk because it feels good, not because I have to. Pure guilt-free enjoyment. And I want to. Yes. This morning I went on a walk, uh, and uh go, i want to go back quickly to that like when you have the gut to ask someone and like a feeling to ask someone or do a, an action or something towards someone do it uh, i was walking to the park and there's just like the guardians of the place right you know the people that are tasked to look after it and i just like it was like just like older fat fat man i'd say that to describe him not as a judgment um and i just like i just wave at him he's like over there somewhere <laughs> and he waves back Mm. And then he goes and um, I, was, I didn't really like think much of that but then he goes like good luck he doesn't know me he doesn't, like he, he doesn't know what's happening in my life but that good luck felt so good and I was like dude good luck to you too what for who gives a shit just good luck <laughs> great success you know <laughs> it's like that I a few months ago I wouldn't have done that I would just skulk right past that guy. Not even in, it wouldn't even be in my awareness zone. That's the difference between trauma and release. Yes, yes, you would have never saw that guy. It being gone. You you might have seen him, but you wouldn't have like seen him. Yep. Yeah. Yep. He would have been an NPC. Yeah, NPC. Yeah, but really, I was the NPC. Yeah, you were the NPC. You weren't playing the game. You were just kind of going through. Yeah, I was not leveling up. Not at all. <laughs> wow, oh, man. Yeah. Little exchanges of, uh, of energy that you have access to that you just kind of pass up. That's, that's, that's walking. So much of walking is walking next to people. And it's like, are you guys going to just give each other that little, like, here's a little energy for you. Here's some for you. Mm. you know, let's just reciprocate it. Just anything. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what's up? Yeah. Just like, Hey, how I are love you? compliments. I love compliments. I love giving mm. people compliments while I'm walking and I love receiving them. It's the fucking best. You know mm. who doesn't? Trauma. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. Trauma doesn't like a compliment, huh? Trauma cannot receive a compliment because guess what? You fucking hate yourself. So when people tell you that they love you, you're like, why do you love me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah, not lovable. You... Why do you love me? Yeah, they feel guilty about it. Like they feel like an imposter, maybe. Like there's a million things you could feel like, but yeah, it's it yes. all manifests customized to you. It's Taylor made something... trauma. There's the podcast title: Taylor made trauma. <laughs> Taylor made trauma. Take yeah, and music. if something uh, there's there's a, a thing where if something good happens to someone, uh, they like can't accept it, or like they turn a good thing into like just feelings so horrible sabotage because all that shit. Yeah, because they got a good thing, and it's like I don't deserve this. You know what? Yes, the trauma that I'm happy to be gone of to to have let go of. Forty five minute calls. Mm. <laughs> that trauma is fucking gone out of our lives. Yeah, we upgraded. We upgraded yeah, to Zoom Premium. Let's uh, go. ZP. 
No, you're exactly right with the trauma, how you can't receive it. Uh, my first year of personal training, every time someone would pay me, uh, I would not feel worthy of it. Uh, and until recently, until the past couple months, still, I struggle with it. I got paid yesterday and I was still like, oh, why am I feeling so weird? But uh, knowing that I'm worth that fucking money, I'm worth it. Like uh, receiving the abundance of the universe is so crucial you have to receive it um because if you have to you got to celebrate it you got to receive it um and i'm getting better at that because guess what i'm fucking worth it i'm worth it baby hell yeah (laughs) that's right (laughs) work it as as the kids say you better work it (laughs) twerk it i think that was a few years old well i'll allow it What do you think, Chase, of all this stuff? It's a lot of stuff. I mean, this is a lot of stuff. This stuff, I, uh... hold on. This stuff that we would have been calling woo-woo just a year ago. And now we're just talking about it like it's completely normal because it is. <laughs> <laughs> Reach laughs because you would be the first to call it woo-woo. <laughs> it's true. It's true, man. I went and laid down on a fucking table and this lady hovered her hands over me. <laughs> I was crying and I feel She's so much better. Girl. <laughs> um dude the okay so the idea of woo woo and like things that we can't explain with science like i uh i've thought a little bit lately about like kind of just like how understanding is nested in different layers like the more you learn about like my on a micro scale like what's happening with atoms and energy and calories and like on a macro scale what's happening with the universe and then like so many things that we can't explain with quantum physics, like you can go so far down that you hit a point where we don't understand anything and so far up that you hit a point where we don't understand anything. And both of those extremes probably go on forever. So we live in a limited bandwidth. If you want to think about Russian nesting dolls that expand infinitely in either direction, you know what I'm saying? Russian, yeah. you know, the re- so it's layers. And it's like, we have access to like, maybe 10 layers of experience but the russian nesting dolls go on forever downward and upward and it's like we are just nested in a couple planes of understanding and maybe things are happening beyond these planes and when we talk about things and do things maybe we're affecting the russian nesting dolls and the planes beyond Mm -hmm. our comprehension and and we we there's just so many things that we can't explain through science that like the idea of woo once you realize science's limitations is like it becomes so much more integrated in with your life to to coin yeah it almost becomes explainable really right Mm -hmm. uh also what a fantastic conceptualization of infinity (laughs) yeah i want to add to that analogy i want to add to that analogy real quick and say you can also look at it as what a radio frequency on, on like radio mm. what is 69.69 that's 69 fm you know with mm. the nice oh, radio and then the, the static of the universe is, is in, expands on how that knob just keeps turning just keeps going yeah it's like that knob is also 3d and is is a fucking in ball instead of a knob and just goes in every direction as well we're 69.9 and you can do things that make you access 69.8 and yeah. make you access 60 uh, 70 you know, yeah. like you can do things yes. that get you to access those those slightly different channels, but then beyond that, it's just a it's a crapshoot. You get a bit crazy. You can reach eighty five. Shit, <laughs> EMT <laughs> baby. And it's really how far do you want to go? Experience out of your human body. Me personally, boys, I have fucking devoted my life right now, currently, to the physical, to straight three-dimensional physical body i don't really care to go into these higher dimensions because you do have to sacrifice a little bit of your physical body which i meet people who do like i meet people who are these uh beings who don't care as much for their physical body as they do going off into space Mm. right going off into these higher dimensions i am so fucking cool with chilling and teaching people about this physical part of the human experience 
where it's like, hey, man, we don't need to talk woo-woo. I'm going to teach you how to fucking squat. It's going to feel good. You're going to breathe in this way. We're going to breathe. We're going to breathe. We're going to fucking chill. We're going to drink some water. And I am so okay with saying that at this point in my life, I'm just going to fucking chill in the physical, motherfuckers. I like chilling in the fucking physical right now. I'm not saying this is going to be forever, but man, the human, this physical experience is fucking intense if you can experience it from a spiritual level. Mm. And uh, that's what I'm doing. That's that's what I'm doing, and I'm super happy with it. That's beautiful. Does that make sense? It makes sense. You're also studying sex right now. That's physical. You're yes, just, this is everything where about is right what, now. Everything about what I'm feeling at this point is just so 3D here in this moment that, uh, yeah, I'm just chilling. Hey, there is nothing better you can do than to follow your interests. If you're if you're truly like to be in truth and to follow your interests and not follow the thing that's distracting you from from your trauma, like don't oh, yeah. follow, like give not into temptation, but follow your interest. And that's like that is because you will continue to become an expert at the thing that you're interested in and you'll learn more about it, maybe be able to share that shit with other people. And if, if as in Ufgang's interpretation of the Russian nesting dolls, if you are on channel, did we say channel 69.9? I said yes. 69.69. Oh, then if you, dude, you're on channel 69.6969 and you're just, <laughs> you're 69ing on that channel right now. Send us an email. And I'm, and I'm <laughs> fucking chilling there, man. I don't want to go anywhere else right now. I, dude, I still want to chill here. And uh, because I mean, when I first started place. training, I was like, hey, I want to introduce you to a higher dimension secretly. Like, I wasn't telling these people, mm. but like, I want to do meditation at the end. I want to do all this. I'm like, Man, I just want some blood flow to around your fucking body. I want you to feel a burn. I want you to feel a pump. How amazing the human body feels when it's working in the correct way. And that's all I want to do. <laughs> oh, and I want a 69. Nice. <laughs> that's F for the extra fee. <laughs> dude, you're a... Uh, I don't want a 69. You, I was thinking about uh, this. Uh, you do the work of like saving lives um as a personal trainer uh because it's like instead of like someone going to the hospital because they have diabetes like they come to you like before they get diabetes and like you like so so like you're saving lives but then like maybe like therapists or i mean definitely therapists are saving lives but then maybe like the, just like that guard that like smiles at you on your walk and just gives you energy is like s slightly pushing people in the right direction of wanting to work on themselves and it's like maybe if you're following your interest and in trying to help people you're doing the work of like just helping the collective and and just everybody is feeding off of that yes it's not like i'm uh doctors are saving people which is awesome from acute uh, things that are happening like car crashes and stuff, but those chronic illnesses that doctors are saving people from can be uh, avoided if from other healers that it doesn't get to that extreme point of where it's like you've been living with a chronic illness for so long. Now we have to approach heart uh, heart surgery and all of these crazy things or hip surgery or knee surgery or ankle surgery or shoulder surgery. It's as if uh, there's a bunch of these healers out there that are saving people before they have to get to the last fucking resort. There are people that fix, there are people that will repair your broken leg and people that will tell you not to jump off a cliff. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I want to put that in even yes. better way. There's people who fix your broken leg and there's people who will sit with you at the cliff and be like, Why, what, how do you feel that jumping off the cliff is serving you? <laughs> mm, yeah yeah or we're gonna sit on the cliff and be like uh, you want to do some squats <laughs> oh, this is squats for us mitigates fall damage <laughs> are you gonna get a a butt pump hey before you jump off this cliff you, you want to try these mushrooms you want to subscribe to my newsletter <laughs> oh my god <laughs> how's everyone's physical uh body been feeling a lot better since yesterday <laughs> yeah 
yeah, I feel I feel full of vitality and life and joy and myself and authenticity and everything, and I fucking love it. I love it. Also, I don't have my bench anymore uh, because I left that in Sweden because you know I had to travel across fucking continents with shit. But still have this bad boy, and let me tell you, ball. Yeah, my own ball. It's uh, oh, sit right there or don't I guess? Okay. I'm it's even better than the bench because it doesn't just keep my legs somewhere stiff. I have to keep in balance as I'm doing the ab exercises. So that's going well. Nice. Chase, you've been throwing some weight around or what? Yeah, that's about all I do, man. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's Yeah, it's good. Uh, here's what I'll say. I am, I am being a fitness enthusiast, normal person, and I'm definitely pushing weight in the sagittal plane going hard doing the squats right. deads the overheads but i uh not the, i mean there's always a but right there's always something you need to work on but like you when you're a personal trainer you have the bug you're doing new mobility stuff and like i'm yes. i just kind of am doing what works and i have been doing what works for so long but i'm getting stronger all the time and i fucking love it um nice you know, yeah are you partying still not nearly as much. The phase is coming out. I mean, now it's micro phases where it's like once a month I go on a week long chaos trip. But then, nice. for the most part, it's, it's it's a lot more dialed in. Nice. When you visited me, I was in a chaos. Uh, I was living in the fire. That was fucking awesome, man. I was so I was I wouldn't have w- wanted to come at a better time. I mean, I can jump back into the fire at any given moment. I know you can. <laughs> no doubt about it. <laughs> Nobody's doubting that. Uh, no, but it's forgot. it's great. Oh. oh, after you, Wolfgang. I got nothing to say. I'm just uh, like I'm, I'm just expressing enjoyment for for the experience. And I'm expressing enjoyment to, towards you guys. Love you. Uh, and I also have. <laughs> Thank you, Mitch. Cool. <laughs> everyone. I also have the. I don't know if you saw it, Mitch. This kind of like transformer machine with weights and shit you you saw it chase mm-hmm. I still don't quite know how to use all of it because some Wait, what like a bow flex or something i don't know what's it called chase he has like a lat pull down machine but it's also got different purposes but yeah. it's it's definitely set up to do like lat pull downs and i'm like i'm trying to f- still kind of figure out what the fuck some things are about because one of like you'll have a thing where it's like oh this does this but then the cable isn't long enough to do that. So it has must have another purpose, right? But just from being like on what fucking five kilogram weights for a year and a half or whatever it was. Yeah. Uh, just having the ability to sit on that fucking chair and just push that fucking chest machine part of it forward mm-hmm. with genuine weight that I feel good fucking pushing. Nice. It's so good. <laughs> nice. Nice. Because let me tell you, those five kilograms were doing their job, but it was boring as piss back then. Yeah, that's nothing. Yeah, yeah. You, next, you, you next, you're gonna get the barbell, and then yeah, probably. I have been thinking about it. Just gotta work on figuring out financials. As I was yeah. saying, <laughs> dude, you yeah. just gotta find some old guy who's getting rid of it. You, that's really the secret. That's true. Yeah, is to that's find the old man. Find the old man. Find your Obi Wan Kenobi. No, I don't like Obi Wan Kenobi. <laughs> well, I would not hang out with Obi Wan. <laughs> steal his lightsaber and. I, I want to uh, fucking. I'll, I'll hang out with Mace Windu. Waste Mindu. I'll hang out with him. Better hope he's alive. <laughs> Listen, he has a purple rights, lightsaber. He knows how to rave. He knows how to party. If you don't die on screen, you're out there. Mitchy, I feel like you're about to say something. <laughs> No, I'm listening. I like talking Star Wars. Well, Obi Wan dies on screen, so fuck oh. you. <laughs> hey, I yeah, went fucking right, busking. Dude. I went busking, uh, busking for the first time with my guitar teacher. It's when you play guitar on a street and get money. Oh yeah, I saw it so on your buddies. Fucking did that for, oh. and we've done it twice now. And on the second time, so the first one was my birthday, Happy and birthday. had never done it before. And then the second time, I wanted to raise enough money to go watch the Barbie movie. Watch the fucking Barbie movie, and it was so fucking good, dude. The Barbie <laughs> movie is on fire. Have you guys seen it? I have not. 
I'm going to see it this Tuesday. Oh, it's so good, Chase. You're going to love it. And But I also want you to recognize that you should lower your expectations for me blowing it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's fine. Yeah. We, we just, speaking of blow up, we have discount movie Tuesdays. And last Tuesday, we saw Oppenheimer. And this okay. Tuesday, we're going to see Barbie. What would you think of Oppenheimer? thought it was like appropriately hyped. <laughs> nice, so it was pretty good. That's such yeah. a review of all time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's very hyped up. It's very good. Hopefully, uh, I have nothing to add to that discussion. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I feel like Barbie's the same way. I feel like it's probably appropriately hyped. It's so hyped. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's great. It's good. And I've been wearing suspenders lately, too. Yeah, I don't know if Wolfgang heard you say that. What? Can you explain why you wear suspenders again okay. before we go here? So, oh, so I was at a wedding. So I was at a wedding and I wore suspenders and I was like, holy shit, something's happening here. There's something happening in my There's midsection that I don't know. <laughs> so what it was, I realized when I wear suspenders, almost always, even if I'm wearing pants that fit me or shorts that fit me, I'm pressing a little bit against my pants. So Exactly like in lifting, when you wear a belt, you press against the belt. The same thing's happening here. So when I put the suspenders on, this thing pulls my pants up, my shorts up. So then I feel like my whole midsection, I can just suck my midsection in, like my belly button in towards my spine. And it feels so good because now I'm walking and I'm not walking, pressing against my pants. I'm actually walking, pulling in against my spine. I have 11 fucking pairs of of suspenders now and I wear them every single day and it's amazing like I feel so good <laughs> that's beautiful I have, from the start of the I have rainbow suspenders I have tractor suspenders I have peacock suspenders I have red suspenders white suspenders black suspenders let me tell you people try suspenders Try suspenders see eh? it's the greatest hit that's ever been would you say suspenders versus um cranial sacral therapy <laughs> which has made you feel lighter so i wouldn't have been able to experience the suspenders because of the craniosacral so craniosacral number one but then it released some trauma in my hips to where i wanted energy to flow through there so i put the suspenders on and it's like oh, i like feeling what's going on around my pelvis now was it the therapy that made you realize that you maybe should change to suspenders? So when I released that first trauma from the therapy around my hip, around my right hip, I started moving in that area more. And so now I'm starting to build my core around there. Like how you're so Chase, I, I don't know if everyone knows if they haven't watched the YouTube videos. He has a fucking amazing like six to eight pack. Your stomach is so flat and it's so sexy and then I started being able, once I released that trauma, I started be, being able to train that area of my body because I'm like, how does Chase look like this? Like, But it's because I released that trauma and now I started training it. And then I was like, holy shit, these suspenders feel so good letting the energy move there. I would have, I guarantee I would have never found the suspenders without doing the therapy. That's also why I say the deadlift is the best core exercise. Because you have to suck in. And you have to you have to be able to access it. It's like I'm gonna do this deadlift with my core. Yes, yes, yeah. but not a lot of people know that. No, no, no. Lift with your belly. Is that what you're up. saying? Yes, <laughs> yeah. you have to suck the belly button in when you're deadlifting. You have to suck it in so tight. Yeah, it's good. So wow, good. man, I'm glad you have access to that. And thank you for the hidden belly compliment. Dude, you got a sexy ass stomach. <laughs> yeah. Dude, you have a sexy ass stomach too. You're ripped, man. No, it's getting better now because I can feel it again. But thank you. Yeah, nice. yeah. Dude, Mitch, you're in it. I'm like slowly devolving into a desk jockey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> so I have to take off relatively soon. I feel like we've come a long way here. We have. Um, I feel like I have the most homework out of anybody. Like I feel, I feel like um, I need to find. I don't need to, but I I want to. I think I want to find someone who's going to help me identify the rocks in my shoes that I don't know about. I look forward. Fuck to Fuck yeah, yeah. 
You yeah. got this, Chase. I'm ready for a different Chase. <laughs> oh boy, I come, dude! What if I come back on a, like the next time you guys talk to me? I'm just like emo so hunk. down. I'm emo. And you and got I suspenders, have... huh? You got suspenders. Next, <laughs> next episode of Leave Feeling Better. Chase comes in like, "Hey guys," and I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, I'm I'm literally like getting a hold of you from Warped Tour. <laughs> and I like went back in time and I have eyeliner on and I have like the <laughs> pullover and I'm just dude I don't know if you noticed I had blonde hair for the past two months yeah, uh, yeah I dyed my hair blonde I got piercings dude I have piercings all over me now I got my nose I got the septum I got the tragus I got these like I am channeling my uh 90s for sure and it was because <laughs> of the, the the trauma <laughs> Hell yeah. wait were you uh were you healing trauma that hit you in the 90s and you're like, I'm going to reclaim the 90s? Probably. Dude, there dude, there was one time where she was clearing the trauma in my hip and she said, how old are you in your body right now? And I didn't know anything to say besides eight. And I said eight. And that trauma had been there since I was eight years old and I didn't even know it. I asked my mom, I told my mom that story and my mom was like, yeah, the hardest times of your life are probably from eight to ten. And I was like, holy shit, how did I know that? I've been carrying that shit on for, dude, I'm 32. I, I had been carrying it since I was eight. That's what Ooh. I need to figure out right there. Isn't that crazy? That's amazing. I'm glad, dude. It's, so, it makes uh, me so happy that um, like human beings can go for many revolutions around the sun in a, in a certain way and then do something that brings them back to a way they were many many years ago like something it's a it's not a thing of learning it's like a thing of remembering and it's so beautiful man it's like you come out of the womb just like this little freaking you got access to a different point of reality and y'all we just spend our whole lives forming a different understanding of it that may or may not be helpful Yes, and the best thing was is that you guys loved me even when I still had all that big trauma. So thank yeah. you. I love Dude. you for who you are and I love you for who you're going to become. It's not like you're a bad person before the work. You just go from good to like gooder to Better. gooder, you know? Yes. Yes. I want to I want to do a quick analogy. Uh-huh. That's my closing statement. Yeah. Which is you come out of the womb and you're a sponge and you continue to be a sponge. And at some point in your life something happens or some things happen that solidify that sponge into a rock and uh, healing that trauma turns you back into a sponge that's how, I, that. that's how i want to look at it at least in this moment and then poof just let go of the let go of the thought it was good talking with you guys always yeah and yeah. uh we did it